Okay, welcome to lesson four in Supercharged SEO. As we've said, in this series of lessons, we're going to show you how to get to grips with SEO, make it work for you, and to help you build your business. So the lessons we've covered already, we looked at a bit about how SEO works. We looked at the breakdown of a site and about which bits work best for you. Then we went on to working with images in the last lesson. In this one, we're going to cover server speed, some technical setup, and which tools that I use and which ones you can trust to actually give you figures you really need. Uh, and then beyond that, we're going to look a little bit at history, and then we're going to actually show you really directly how to SEO a site and a page, and actually show you a real live example of what I did to sort of like prove a point. Then going on to how to build powerful pyramids to make sure when you get there, you stay there. So let's get on and let's get started on this lesson four. And this one, it's not really very technical, but we'll look at it. So I keep calling it a technical setup, but I don't think it is. I, don't, I think there's nothing on here which is techie. I'm not that techie and nothing on here is beyond me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the tools and say the ones that you can trust. So we're going to go through, we're going to look at secure hosting, which has become critical, uh, sitemaps. Then we're going to focus on the speed of the site. Uh, and the tools we use to get them to make them go faster and the reward you get from Google by playing by their rules. So no more mess than that, let's get on with it. Over the last few years, speed has become everything. Speed is really, really critical. The faster your site delivers, the more likely it is to rank. Well, it's not quite everything but it's a huge ranking factor and I think it's becoming maybe even more important for user experience. People will not wait for a site to load. If your site is slow, they won't wait, they'll just go elsewhere. And why do you want to risk that when it's really quite easy to actually speed your site up? So image size, speed of delivery are two things that we're going to focus on here and they're two things which can make a massive difference. So you can actually buy hosting for a few dollars a month but you generally get what you pay for and faster hosting, faster delivery speeds does cost a little bit more money, but it's worth every penny. If you're serious about making money online, running sites, you have to have your site fast. So we'll look at a couple of comparisons on that as well. So straight in, secure sites, HTTPS. We've all seen it, the little lock in the top left hand corner. In Chrome, it gives you a little green mark now to actually show that you're a safe site. It's a, it's a new standard that Google have introduced uh, as of January 2017, so literally just happened, um, and, but they expect all sites to be secure. But it's not really a surprise because it's been given as a ranking factor for at least a year, so I don't think it's that much of a, supply, a surprise. And Google believe that it offers a safer online experience for their customers, so you're less likely to have your details intercepted by phishing. Anything that you can do to make your site safer, Google will reward you for it. So apparently there'll be a tiny speed penalty by switching to HTTPS secure, but it's still worth doing. It will be milliseconds. Uh, you wouldn't probably notice the difference, but the rewards for doing it are greater than the loss of speed, definitely. So for me, it's one of those things you need to action ASAP, absolutely ASAP. Depending on who your host is, most of them have the ability to just switch it on, just enable it. It might cost you $50, it might cost you $100, but every single host has that ability to do it now. If they don't, then move hosts because you really do need to switch it on. If you're using a CDN for your images, uh, then you need to make sure this is secure too, or you'll be marked as a mixed security site and potentially penalized. So there's three types. There's insecure, there's mixed security, and there's secure. You need to be on the secure side of secure. So when you do it, make sure you redirect all of your old links, uh, incoming links into the new secure pages, or you'll lose lots of good SEO juice. And this is a very, very common mistake. You'll need to set the secure site up within Webmaster Tools as well, but that's pretty easy and most of the information will just be carried across because Google know what you're doing now. But you do need to set it up as a new site within Webmaster Tools, possibly within Analytics as well, so just make sure you do that. So the next thing is a sitemap, which is essential too. Um, a sitemap allows Google to see the layout of your site. It's not the one that you used to see at the bottom of uh, at the sort of like the footer menu but it's the bit that sits underneath giving directions to search engines. Think of it more like a roadmap for Google to navigate your site. Uh, it's generally got to be located at forward slash sitemap.xml. That's where Google first looks for it. 
if you don't have one there it might be ignored and for me unless you tell Google exactly where things can be found it would only take a shallow look at what page you have on offer and index part of your site although some of the massive sites I think like eBay don't use a sitemap they actually have done the opposite so because they don't give Google a sitemap they Google then come in and index their entire site very very regularly because it's being updated all the time but in short the more you work with Google uh, the more highly they regard your site and the more time they're prepared to spend working with you I think it's a, it's a sort of reward thing is if you play by their rules they give you rewards back in ranking so as I said before many of the standard content management systems offer this out of the box so as you update your site it updates your sitemap but not all so make sure you check have a quick look WordPress is great for it so if you use something like the uh, Yoast SEO plugin that will actually do that all automatically for you but just have a quick check check it's there if it's not then you need to know why you need to get to a CMS that does or you need to actually find a tool that will actually create it for you most of the out-of-the-box CMS's will have a plugin I can't imagine there's one left that doesn't have a plugin now that actually just allows that to happen very simply uh, this is what one looks like uh, this is a nice tidy one you can see the structure here this is a master sitemap and underneath there are level next level down of the site structure leading onto all the individual pages so you can see here the sitemaps of the posts pages case studies categories blah 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 and then as you go down when you click onto post it will show you all the posts within the sitemap so that's a really nice easy way for Google to look at it and that's generated automatically by Yoast that particular one as you can see so the next one is server speed there's loads of ways to test this and we'll show you a few of them now so one easy way you can do it is with the Alexa plugin for Chrome and you can see over here where it actually says uh, that it's fast but there's lots of other ones as well so being fast is obviously really critical but with the next tool uh, we can put some numbers on that which make it easier to start improving things uh, so there's that one there you can see that at the bottom right so 1.042 seconds that's pretty quick for a load time it does depend on the size uh, but yeah, so it's faster than most sites by the look of that. So the best tool for this is Google PageSpeed Insights. It's an absolutely phenomenal tool. And again, because it's a Google tool, if you play by Google's rules, they will reward you with, with higher ranking. Um, so if you look at this score here, this is the mobile speed. 95 out of 100 is pretty much as good as a score I've ever seen. I have, well, I haven't, I've never seen a better score than that. And you can also see down here at the bottom, they reward, they mark it 99 out of 100 for user experience as well. So all the buttons over here are the right size and everything is actually designed around and it works. It works well and it's fast. Yeah, if Google give you a tool, then it's well worth looking at it as they don't give much away for nothing. So the next one is the the desktop version of that and you can see on here again that it's 87 out of 100 which is also green so this is a really excellent score but it's very rare uh, I don't see that very often so it gives you a score for both mobile and desktop and underneath here it gives you a few pointers to go through and improve things for yourself too uh, and when Google tell you what to do you really should listen so this is a, a lesser score uh, and as you can see on here these are 47 and 54 out of 100 which is far more normal and they're both signaled as red so and red does mean danger so these people need to get on top of things and really speed things up or fairly quickly they're going to stop ranking so this is another site again where you can see 61 on the mobile speed and they've got one bad result and one that's acceptable so look they're 61 for mobile and 76 for desktop neither of which are put yeah they're okay and in fact these are far more common uh, the, you're much more likely to see these scores so this is one we're working on at the moment to try and actually speed it up because it really does need to go quicker uh, but you can see what it is down below again it tells you what it is that that will help speed that up the next one, the next tool I'm going to show you is Pingdom Front Page Tester. This is just a brilliant tool. It's absolutely exceptional. It allows you to not only sort of rank your home page for speed, but it also then tells you which bits are being slowed down or which bits are actually slowing you down. So in this example, it's a European site. And so you can see that you can test it over here. You can test it from a European server. 
There's also two servers in the US, in both Dallas and New York, and one in Melbourne that you can use too. So a score of 89 is pretty good, uh, but what's more impressive is a load time of less than uh, less than a second for a 1.1 meg speed or 1.1 meg site homepage size. Now that was the same one that got 95 and 87 on PageSpeed Insights, but it's still only getting a B on here in terms of performance grade. So there is actually ways that it could be made even faster. So we're going to look at the next uh, thing there, and this actually starts to tell you when you scroll down. It tells you which bits in there. Uh, are actually slowing you down. So on here you can see combine external JavaScript. That can normally be done with a plugin. So it's only getting 48 out of 100. This one here, combine external CSS. There's a plugin for that that can actually make it go faster. So why wouldn't you deploy it? It, it will just make things quicker again and actually secure your position at the top. You know, don't be complacent about getting things improved uh, and see where else you can find green lights. When you scroll down again, it gives you an even further breakdown um, about which bits are loading in which order. It looks confusing, but the more you look at it, the more you can actually see. So on here, you can see that it's 60% uh, is script, 29% of it is image. So it's a, it's there's still lots that can be done to actually improve this. If that script can be combined down and get it to 30 or 300 kilobytes, it could be made much, much quicker. So this is one example, uh, which was a client I was working with, where their image is on the front page. You can see here, uh, original size 2.5 meg, that one 5.16 meg, this one 426, this one 834. Just by reducing it simply, uh, we got it from 9 meg for all of those images, reduced it by 91.5%, which is an absolutely massive, massive reduction. Uh, and just by reducing that page weight, you will increase the speed of the page. So what does this do for site speed? This is what it actually did for them. Uh, it, they managed to get that page size down then by changing the format of it completely to 153 kilobytes. Performance grade uh, B, 89, but the load time, look at that, half a second, less than half a second, faster than 97% of other sites. Uh, so by listening, they've managed to reduce it absolutely massive. It's one of the fastest sites I've ever seen now. Now this is one here. Uh, where I was asked why this page wasn't ranking. I was asked to look at it. Why isn't this page ranking? It looks lovely. It's a really pretty page. But when you scroll down the page, if you look here, there's lots of images. Again, looks really pretty. looks very logical. They're all nicely sorted. But when you run Pingdom on it, you can see that that page is 64 megabytes. So even though 64 megabytes, so even though it's on an incredible uh, server because it's still actually getting a performance grade A it's take and it's only taking three seconds to load it uh, it's actually incredible the size it's the biggest one I've ever surveyed which is a 64 meg page so reduce that and you'll reduce the load time you will increase the ranking of that page so there's three excellent tools for reducing image size the we the ones I use so it's probably worth testing which one you prefer but these are the three that I use. So uh, image recycle, uh, there's a paid version and a free version. The paid version is easier because you can just bulk upload and bulk download. Tiny PNG is great because it does PNGs as well as JPEGs uh, and it's really good. Uh, and the one I use is actually JPEG Mini, which is an app and it costs $15 or something. Uh, it's super fast and you can just batch, you can just chuck an, enti an entire folder, uh, size the images, then chuck the entire folder at it and it will just strip out loads and loads of image weight. So just to prove the point, here's the thing with three images uh, side by side. The one on the left over here you can see is 5 megabytes. The one in the middle has been massively reduced and it's 226 kilobytes. And this one here is 99 kilobytes. And I don't think you can tell the difference. So unless you're looking at that on some incredible screen, I'm looking at this on a high definition screen and I can't tell the difference between the three. So which is gonna load faster, 99 kilobytes or five megabytes? Go for the 99 kilobytes every time. So the one at the top is actually, or the first one, the five megabyte one is untouched as it came out of the image library, 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. The middle one was reduced to 1200 by 800 pixels as it's gonna be used at that size on the site. And the right hand one is optimized like crazy. It's still 1200 by 800, but it's optimized down to 99 KB. If you could tell the difference, you're a better man than me, a better woman or man than me. 
And then the other one is really if you uh, if you do if you have got a lot of images on your site, then it will probably be worth deploying a CDN uh, to help you download images faster. This is how a CDN works. In that uh, you can see there, if you aren't deploying a CDN, then all of your images have to be downloaded from your site every time. Whereas a CDN content delivery network, what that does is it puts images, saves them uh, around the internet for you. So th this is my really simple way of explaining. Um, it it pushes the static elements around the internet so that when people come to access them locally, they're, they're cached near to them and therefore they download much faster. Uh, but it can really speed things up by uh, delivering the site from more than one source. So it's like they're coming in from all sorts of different places and it means that everything is compiled on your page even faster. So that's it. So that's some of the technical bits. They're not very technical, as I said, for the fourth part of SEO. Um, what we've looked at is some of the technical requirements. We've said that you really need to move on to an HTTPS secure site. You need to ensure you have a sitemap in place and that it's built the right way and that it's updated constantly. And you need to make sure your site is fast, really fast. So we've given you some of the tools we use to make sites faster. And then what we're going to do next in lesson five, we're going to look at some of the old tricks that SEOs used to use. but these have mostly been outlawed but there's still a few that might be worth exploring but we're going to look at the history of it a little bit of history and then why that that's been outlawed then so we will see you there in lesson five thank you mm -hmm.